In this video, you're going to get to make really cool looking curvy line snake things. I'm not really sure what exactly to call this based on trigonometric functions that you already know. So what you do is implement two trig functions, x equals cosine of theta times r1 and y equals sine of theta times r2, where r1 and r2 are random numbers that are drawn from a uniform distribution between zero and one. Now, essentially what this is doing, what these R's are doing is changing the speed of the cosine. So they will make the cosine or the sine go faster or slower. And when you plot X by Y, you're going to get these interesting looking functions. Now, every time you run it, it's going to be different because these two values will be different from each other and randomly selected. Okay, so then there's a couple of additional points that you want to do. So first of all, you can see that I am displaying R1 and R2 only to two significant digits. So 0.36 and 0.68. Now, as I mentioned, your numbers will differ, but you wanna see if you can get this to display with only two numbers after the decimal point. Secondly, a bit of an extra coding challenge is to figure out how to plot this line so that the beginning and end points are actually drawn to each other. So you wanna add another point to these functions to make sure that there's a line that goes from here to here. Now I left it out in this plot because honestly, I'm not really sure that the picture looks better with that connecting line. I think it looks a little bit nicer without the connecting line, but it's a nice, challenge in Python programming to get this line to connect to this line. So the start and end of these functions to connect to each other. As I frequently do with the more challenging aspects of these coding exercises, I'm about to give you a hint. It's the hint is the method or the function that you use to get this to work. So if you don't want the hint, if you want to figure out how to make this line yourself, now is your opportunity to pause the video. Otherwise, here is the hint you want to use something called np.append. So it's a function in the NumPy module called append. And I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to use it, but at least that's the hint to get you started. All right, so now I will switch to Python and show you how I solved this exercise. So let's see. Let's start by creating the angles. So let's call this, I'll call this uh, t for theta. So that's going to be linearly spaced numbers. And I didn't actually tell you what range you should use, but I'm going to use eight pi. So eight times pi. And let's go for a thousand numbers in between zero and eight pi to give us a nice resolution. All right, so then we need r1 equals numpy.random.rand. And then r2 also equals numpy.random.rand rand. Now you could have also done this in a slightly different way. You could have said r equals numpy.random.rand2. And then later on, you would use r0, uh, 0 and r1. So either way you want to do it is fine. Now we define x and y. So x was cosine of r1 times the variable t and then y equals np.cosine of r2 times t. And now, before I get started with the actual plotting, I wanna show you what this is going to look like. So t comma x and t comma y, and then plt dot show. So you can see that the sine and cosine have different speeds, and that comes from these different values of r1 and r2. So when I run this multiple times, you see sometimes the speed is almost matched. This is a pretty interesting one where the blue line is actually slightly, slightly faster than the orange line. And actually looking at this plot now, I see that this is a typo. This should be sine. Okay, now you see, in fact, they, they get aligned here. It just happens by chance. Okay, so that looks interesting, but in fact, the goal is to plot x by y like this. And now we're starting to get a really interesting looking curve. So let's see, let me do a few more things. I'm gonna uh, make this axis square. I'm going to force the limits to go from, let's say minus 1.1 to 1.1, 1 
on the x domain and for the y it's going to be 1.1 also to or minus 1.1 to plus 1.1 okay and then let's see i want this to be a black line and then i want the axis off so plt axis off all right this is looking pretty cool i think this looks really neat ha huh, that's a funny one so to understand these a little bit better this one also looks pretty neat to interpret these functions a little bit better it's useful to have the title on here so plt.title and i'm going to say r1 equals percent s and then r comma 2 equals percent s so then we replace these with r1 and r2 okay so now there's two things that I, I need to change. First of all, look how many decimal points this goes out to. So we need to show only the first two numbers after the decimal point. And the way that I'm going to implement that is by using the round function. Now, if you just round like this, if you just round these numbers, this is actually not going to give you a very interesting result because all of these numbers, so every possible number is basically just gonna round to zero or one. So, but you can give the round function an optional second input, which tells you the precision of the rounding. So it tells you how many numbers after the decimal point to round to. So this is how I solved that part of the problem. And then I want to get the one to be in a uh, subscript. So the one to be in uh, appearing below the R. Now the way to do that is by using LaTeX coding. But it turns out you don't actually need to make the entire title in LaTeX. We only need this here to be LaTeX. So the underscore to indicate a subscript and then the number after the subscript. So we just embed these two characters here, the underscore and the number, inside dollar signs. And that tells Python to interpret these two characters as uh, LaTeX code. Okay, very nice. So let's keep running this until we get something that's pretty interesting. So remember that if you just take out, so let me see, I'm going to force both R1 and R2 to be 1. And now we just get the unit circle. So that means that when both of these numbers, when both of these R coefficients are close to each other, we're going to get a, a line that looks more like a circle. Let me see... I am just looking for some time when it randomly shows these two numbers to be pretty similar to each other. Okay, so here you go. These two numbers are fairly similar to each other, and you can kind of see that there's a circle that's wanting to happen. And anyway, there's lots of other things you can play with. Let's make this, how about 18 pi, so it goes out for longer. Oh, here's a pretty interesting case. Here we see that the sine part is really large, has a close to full frequency and the cosine part has a very low frequency. So then you see that this function looks an awful lot like a sine wave. Hmm, now this is starting to look really, really pretty. This looks like a pattern you could weave into a quilt or something. And now the very last thing that I wanna do here is show you how to connect the start line to the end line. So we want a line that will go from the starting point to the ending point. Now the trick to getting this to work is to add a new data point to the very end of vector x and the very end of vector y, and we want that new data point to be the same as the first data point. So that means we're going to get basically a full circle. It's gonna go from the last data point to the first data point. And so the way that we can do this is by specifying x equals now what you want to do is something like you know say the last element plus one but this is not really legal code in python so instead what we do is we append so we replace vector x with append and then we want to append vector x with the first element in vector x so now vector x is going to be one element longer than it previously was. And then obviously we do the same thing with uh, vector y. And actually, you know, even just to give you a sense of the lengths here, I'm gonna comment this out. So I'm going to replace x with the appended version of x and not change y. And let's see what happens. So we get an error 
and let's see what the error says. X and Y must have the same first mention, but their shapes differ. So X is 1001 points long, and Y is only 1000 points long. Okay, so uncomment that line. And now I guess here you don't really notice it so much. Let's try another time. Uh, boy, now it happens to be that these cases that I'm doing, okay, here you go. Now, so here you see what I'm talking about that I don't actually think it improves the graphic. I don't think it makes this thing look nicer to have the line, the straight line going from the end point to the beginning point. However, you know, I wanted to include this just to give you a sense of how to do that and introduce you to this append function in the NumPy module. Anyway, there is a lot more that you could do to continue playing with this kind of code and in general exploring the connection between math, in particular here trigonometry, and art or at least kind of, you know, interesting looking things.